day of life. We thank you for another beautiful day. And we ask again for the leading of your Holy Spirit and for wisdom, discernment, and understanding as we study your Holy Scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. The Apostle Paul tells us, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. The Apostle John tell, says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Those were 1 Timothy 2.5 and 1 John 2.1. The wise man tells us, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Proverbs 28, 13. Speaking of Jesus, John also says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. I'd like to turn uh, in our Bibles together to Psalm 110, verse 4. Psalm, Psalm 110, verse 4. So, as mentioned, we have an advocate with the Father. Does that mean the Father is our accuser? Psalm 110, verse 4. It reads, The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Yesterday we read about Jesus being our high priest. And the Apostle Paul makes it even clearer. Who did the Lord appoint, appoint our high priest after the order of Melchizedek? We know that it's Jesus, but let's nonetheless go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. One important thing to remember is that the psalmist wrote those words before Jesus came to this world as a man. Jesus had been already appointed our high priest. Hebrews chapter 5. And we'll start um, with verse 5. Hebrews chapter 5, starting with verse 5. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. In other words, the Father made that declaration. Verse 6, As he saith also in another place, this is Psalm 110.4, which we just read, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Verse 10, Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. God the Father called Jesus our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And if you remember, John refers to Jesus as being the propitiation for our sins. I'd like to take us to the book of Romans, chapter 3. Romans, chapter 3. Romans, chapter 3. Yeah, go ahead to Romans chapter 3. I'm going to read to you again from 1 John. John says, and he, meaning Jesus, is the propitiation. That means atonement for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Romans 3. We'll read verses 24 and 25. That was uh, 1 John 2.2. 2. Romans 3, 24 and 25. It reads, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God, meaning God the Father, 
has set forth to be a propitiation, again, an atonement through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. The part I want to focus on is whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. So the reason we have Jesus for our high priest, the reason we have Jesus for our advocate with the Father is because the Father provided him to be our high priest. The Father provided him to be our advocate. It all goes back, friends, to John 3.16. I think, I think most of you, if not all of you, can quote that verse from memory. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God gave Jesus, yes, to live here on earth and die for us, but also to be, to be for eternity, one with us. He gave him to be our high priest, our advocate. So, if God the Father gave Jesus to be our high priest, our advocate, who's the accuser? Though we know who he is, I'd like to turn to Revelation 12. Revelation 12. And we'll start with verse 7. Revelation 12, starting with verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan. That's how we know the dragon is Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, meaning his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So there we have it, friends. Satan is the accuser. Continuing, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. So friends, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, makes it crystal clear. Satan is the accuser. And here's, here's the, real, the real situation we're in. Whenever we sin, we enable Satan to accuse us of that sin. And if we let that sin go unconfessed, or unforsaken, we only prove that accuser right about us. We only prove him right. Our only hope, friends, is in Jesus Christ. Jesus who died for us. And we'll talk more about that part tomorrow. Not only is Jesus, friends, our, our advocate, mediator, or high, high priest whichever you want to call it. He is something else. Let us turn to chapter 22 of Revelation. Revelation 22. After this, we'll be turning to two more places in the Bible. Revelation 22. A day will come when the declaration is made. Revelation 22, 10 to 12. John tells us, Revelation 22, 10 to 12, And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is, un he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. 
And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Let us turn, let us see who makes that declaration. Let's turn to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Jesus says in John chapter 5, For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. I'm, I'm sorry, that was verse 22. Uh, I'll read that again. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Verse 27. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Jesus, friends, is our judge. We have to remember, friends, God gave Jesus to be our advocate and to be our judge. Satan is the accuser. I'll read to you from the book of Job. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. That's Job 1.6. The margin for Satan reads Hebrew, the adversary. Peter likens Satan to a roaring lion. Peter says that Satan is seeking whom he may devour. That's 1 Peter 5.8. And again, we have to remember, sin is the transgression of the law. 1 John 3.4. All unrighteousness meaning wrongdoing, all unrighteousness is sin. 1 John 5, 17. Again, friends, if we, have a, if we commit a sin, we enable Satan to accuse us of that sin. If it goes unconfessed or unforsaken, we only prove him right. But friends, when we are fully surrendered to Jesus, with our sins confessed and forsaken, he covers us. Praise God. He covers us, and the enemy cannot accuse us. But again, friends, we must be fully surrendered to Jesus. And if you are fully surrendered to Jesus, when your advocate and your judge are one and the same, how can you go wrong? If you were in court and your defense attorney were also your judge, wouldn't you end up going free? Of course. When your advocate and your judge are one and the, one and the same, you can't go wrong. In conclusion, I'd like to take us to Hebrews 7.25 again. Again, I, wanna, I want to emphasize the fact that all this is possible because... Our Savior lives. If Jesus were still lying dead in the tomb, he could not be, again, whatever you want to call it, our mediator, advocate, or high priest. He couldn't be that for us. If he were lying dead in the tomb, he could not be our judge. Even without Jesus' resurrection, friends, we could not be saved. But praise God, our Savior lives. And it reads in Hebrews 7, 25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. May you be among those saved by that great advocate, Jesus Christ. May God bless you as you go through this day. Um, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for, again, giving us Jesus. And we thank you that because of him, we have the hope of eternal salvation. And we pray that you'll be with us and that the Spirit will guide us as we go through this day. And we pray that you will help us to be 
patient and faithful as we continue going through this life. We pray that you will help us to be ready for Jesus' glorious coming. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for listening and for watching. I hope you are blessed. And I'd like to invite you to like, share, and subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel and also share the link so that other people can be able to learn and be able to understand. So uh, thank you very much. May God bless you and have uh, a good day.